Hey guys, good afternoon. This is Brenda Meller with Meller Marketing, bringing you another slice of social media pie and excited. I have another special guest with me here today and I want to introduce you to my dear friend, Emily. Hey, Emily, how are you doing here today? I'm great. Thanks so much, Brenda. The sun is shining and life is good right now. <laughs> yes, it definitely is. And Emily and I were just experiencing, I, I never make mistakes. I always have learning experiences and, and we just had a learning experience, didn't we, Emily, before coming yes, on today? I did not expect that, but we got a good <laughs> takeaway from it, right? <laughs> yeah. So let, let's tell people what happened. Um, I mean, I came into the session and I always have people come in uh, a few minutes beforehand. You came on and then tell people what was happening. So all of a sudden you get that awkward delay where yeah. your voice is coming in, but the the body language is not matching the audio at all. Right. So quick restart yeah. of the computer and closed about 4,000 tabs. Ah. So <laughs> I to only run this StreamYard link is is the secret to the, it's the fix right now. There you <laughs> go. And you know, actually Emily, by sharing that with other people, you might help them troubleshoot if they're experiencing similar delays. And the audio is fine. I mean, Emily and I were talking and I could hear her, but it was like maybe a second or so delay from her lips actually moving in, in the video, you know, happening. So I usually think about this as kind of like a ketchup bottle and something gets stuck and you need to kind of bang on the bottom of it. And and my my um, usual path is exit and then come back in and then we'll try it again. And that was still and I'm like, well, let's try re rebooting the computer and yeah. that works. So this is what we do. We help each other. Right. We, we, we get our boss lady hats on <laughs> We're all introducing the topic here for today. Um, and that's what we do as, as, you know, female entrepreneurs, as individuals who support each other. So before we get started here in the conversation, Emily, what I'd like to do is just take a second to say hello to all of those that are watching us today, whether you're watching on LinkedIn or on Facebook, we would love it if you could drop a comment below because, um, we can't see who you are until you identify yourself with a comment. So if you could drop us a comment, let us know where in the world you're watching from. I'm in beautiful Fraser, Michigan, which is in Macomb County. And Emily, I know you're in Michigan, but where are you located? I'm uh, Birmingham, Michigan. So oh, also yeah. a Metro Detroiter. Yeah. And Emily and I, um, we've met, gosh, I don't remember where or when. I, I feel like I've known you in the social media world forever. And I know you you were at a D business event where you acknowledged it, but I think we knew each other before then. I don't even remember where we first met. Do you? You know, I think it was before you were out on your own. And yeah. You always, you know, I felt always wore your boss lady hat, but now you really, <laughs> in my opinion, stepped into your work life integrator role. So um, I think it was before you were out on your own. So yeah, yeah. I feel like I, I saw you speaking at an industry conference and you and I just, I feel like we clicked, you know, I, we, we connected online first and then we met or we met in person and, and connected online. But I've been a, a huge fan and admirer of yours for, for years, Emily, and I'm so delighted to have you join us. So for those people who don't know, you know, who are you? So could you take a minute, just describe what you do, um, what's your business all about, and then we'll join into the conversation here. Sounds great. And thank you, Brenda. That's the nicest compliment ever. And like <laughs> I said, you have just, you are soaring in all things social media. And LinkedIn. And mirrors. That's all it is right now. <laughs> no, no, hardly, especially, um, you know, I also really like to see that you, you picked a network and you just owned it. So huge hat tip to you too. Um, so, so my business, Hey, there's social media. We do social media marketing for small businesses, large businesses. I mean, any, any brand that needs some help with getting their best digital foot forward online. And we have a new chapter now where we are helping women run their own social media business. Ooh. Okay. And I'm going to pull you up on screen. I hope you don't mind. I pulled your website oh, up on thanks. screen. <laughs> shameless self plug, but it's not shameless because it's me who's doing it and you know I'm, I'm helping you out. So you you kind of niche because I remember for a while, I feel like I remember you talking a lot about teens and social media or, or children and social media, but I remember that being a focus. Is, am I remembering correctly? Well, yeah. So mm -hmm. again, qu quick story. Um, so hey there, I've had for, for the almost 10 years now wow. and um, social media for small businesses where we started. So again, anyone that needed to outsource their social media. And then we just started looking at other ways to use social media responsibly. And five, eight years ago, our, our minds went right to those young digital citizens. And so um, I had a colleague who uh, was an educator by, um, by profession. So that's, that's how we dipped our toe into writing social media curriculum mm -hmm. and social media training courses for, for parents of tweens. And actually those are still used as lesson plans today. Mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, I mean, social media, as you know, it has so many dimensions and it's, it's interesting to see that it's really become the vehicle that my entire team uses to work flexibly. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's been the wind in our sails this last 
this last yeah. especially couple months with COVID. Right. Um, so we'll talk about all that. Yeah, yeah, and it's been, I think what I've seen you do too is you're, you're shifting and evolving your business is what I'm hearing too, kind of partially in, in based on market need and demand, but also I think based on your passions and areas that you see of opportunity. Would, would you agree with that? I would, and, and I personally am someone who has to walk the walk. Um, mm -hmm. So we just looked at it as we were social media professionals who happened to work from home. But then, mm -hmm. like I said, 10 years go by and we realized that it's our lifestyle and it's, it's more than just working from home. Um, so that's where, like I said, social media is what we do every single day, but work-life integration is the way that we've made our, our work and li uh, personal life come together. Awesome, so really great topic that we're gonna be talking about here today. And it is get your boss lady hat on, how to become a work-life integrator. And I asked Emily before I said, are we wearing props? Because when she said that, I had to, I had to get out my hat, you guys. And it's and if any of my uh, my style folks in my network are watching, they're gonna be like, oh, that doesn't that doesn't work. It it clashes, you know, the the TEDx you know reddish <laughs> with the pink. But I can make it work, right? No, I, I think it's fantastic. In fact, how lame am I that I don't even have a boss lady hat <laughs> to put on? Right? No. When you said oh. that, I'm like, I gotta I gotta figure out what what hat I could wear that could like pull this off for today. But um, in all, I love it, Brenda. I love it. Aside, thank you. That's one of my, my speaking props. But kidding aside, um, when we were talking about this topic and I invited you out, I said, what do you want to talk about? And, um, you know, we, we were kind of, you were kicking around ideas and I'm like, I saw this. I was like, yeah, this is going to be a great, fun topic to talk about here today. Oh, um, and I, I saw you doing, uh, you know, I love when I book social media people um, because they promote the event and they, they talk about it on their network. And Emily had put out some posts and people talking about work-life balance. And I think somebody even asked you on Facebook, how do you how do you balance work and life? And and I remember seeing your response. So do you want to you want to talk a little bit about that as we get into the conversation? Sure, sure, absolutely. So again, just um just to to lay the foundation for talking today, it's what yeah. June? What is today? Gosh, June sixteenth. Sixteenth. Um, it's like half over. Is that crazy? I, I love that we. I'm so lucky to have this talk with you after coming off of COVID, and it's not yeah. even coming off of it, right? Like we're still in the pandemic, oh, but yeah. coming off of sheltering in place because that gave all of America a front row seat mm -hmm. of working from home. Mm. And so many millions of people, parents in particular, learned how to work from home with kids. So right. again, just to kind of level set as we jump into this talk today, working from home is not the same as flexible work. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, it's, you know, it's, it's a subtle distinction, but yeah. Flexible work is also not the same when you have your kids running around and trying to school as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I get fired up about this because we all have this new lens and this new perspective to look at our work-life balance or lack thereof. Um, yeah. And so ultimately I see this as an opportunity. So work-life integration to me, just to jump in with a quick definition. Um, and again, I do consider you a work-life integrator. So let me know if you, if that resonates or if there's anything that not so much, yeah. um, but really, work work life integration it just comes from living intentionally yeah and that sounds a little fluffy but taking your professional responsibilities and your personal life choices and merging them in to have synergy so that way at the end of the day you don't feel overwhelmed right you feel present and fulfilled yeah and that's a struggle i think you know i don't know i feel like most women have if they're working full time um, and, and it starts even like before you have the kids. And I have a few of my friends who are recently who are new moms or new moms for a second child. And, and I remember being in that same mindset, like, I'm not going to let motherhood change me. I'm not going to let motherhood like me make me any less productive. Um, so I'm going to prove at work that I'm going to put in the same hours that I'm going to be working late at night. And, and then you end up burning yourself at both ends. Right. And, um, and not feeling like you're a success in, at work or at home. Um, well, and that's, I mean, that's the crux of it. Why, why do women need this flexibility? And I, and I zero in on women, of course, because primarily uh, we are the caretakers. So um, we need flexibility. Um, we need to be able to do our work with our, um, around our life, not the other way around. So um, we are the caretakers. We have busy careers. A lot of women have entrepreneurial goals. Women are people too. Right. <laughs> They, they still have their friends and their hobbies and their interests. So um, ultimately, I think that we, we need to look at it as more of an integrated approach because I feel work-life balance sets us up to fail, sets us up to feel like either one's in the air or, or the other is down. Right. And it, you must have made the wrong choices if you're feeling overwhelmed. So. Right. 
Right there. And there's no, I mean, there's in some aspects, like you're, if you're winning in one area, you're, yeah, like you said, you're failing in the other area. So how can you win if that's the case? So why, why, I mean, tell us a little bit about your background. Why are you passionate about this topic? Is this just coming from your own experience and your own, um, I don't want to say struggles, but your own experiences working through work-life balance and, and being your own boss or tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that um, I was, I saw myself as one way, how I would be a mother and a working mother before I ever was a mother. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get into it and you really just realize that you cannot live in silos, at least living in silos didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of fighting it, we just, my team and I, I, I keep saying my team and I, because my team happens to be all female and we are all mothers mm -hmm. and they, they were mothers before I was a mother. So to be able to learn on the fly and see how there's a lot of things that come into play here. It's, it's a lot of time management. Um, it's a lot of, again, being intentional sounds kind of fluffy, but to me, I say being intentional, you have to make choices. You can't do it all. And by, again, everyone says have it all, like that's really unattainable. But if you stop and say, well, what does it all look like to me? And if it, if that's being able to pop out to, you know, t-ball practice at four o'clock and not worry that you're upsetting your boss, um, or if that's allowing you to work early in the morning or late into the evenings, because that works around your life, right. um, then to me, that is having it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and for you um, too, I mean, I see you as I'm like, I feel like she's got it out and down pat. She's just got this work life balance integration or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> she has got it down. Like we should all be following Emily because Emily is is managing it all. Um and I and I I met your husband, um, Neil. Am I remembering yeah. correctly? Okay, Neil. And I remember meeting him in an event, and it just seems like you've got a very supportive spouse. Um, and and I think that's that's probably part of it, right? And and sometimes we as, as women are enablers, you know, we, we take on what society says is, is roles that we have to do, but we, we have a spouse who can also be a caregiver in the family. And um, I would imagine you guys probably have some, some balance that you're, you're adjusting back and forth. And even now work, cause you used to work from home only by yourself. Was your husband working from home too, or was he in a corporate and now he's working at home? No, yeah, corporate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, with COVID, like I said, everyone got thrown into it. Um, yeah. So that's an adjustment, right? I mean, yeah, it definitely, it definitely was. I think, um, there are so many experts out there that really have systems and processes and expertise around how to create a system in your, in your personal life. Mm -hmm. Um, I am not an expert there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very nice of you to say that I haven't figured out, but no, but by, by no means. Um, and that actually, that was part of the struggle with COVID was my, my colleagues and I, we said, we work from home all the time. Like we've been training our whole life for this. Right. And why is it so hard? So that it's such an outlier situation, but, um, but no, it absolutely. We have days of overwhelm and right. some days where we just say, I can't handle this right now, but that's the key right now. You're right. able to get back to it later. Um, hop online at another time when maybe your kids are, are occupied. Um, but I think, I guess where I get where I feel most comfortable to offer any sort of advice is really just around meeting women where they are today. Yeah. So um, what I mean by that, you know, work, if you, if you work for a company, if you work for yourself, if you have a side hustle, if you do volunteer work, it doesn't matter if you're paid or not paid work is what you do for some sense of professional fulfillment. Mm -hmm. um, using your gifts, your talents, whether you're an organizer or whether you have the most organized mind ever and you can, <laughs> run that Girl Scout troop or that soccer team. Yeah. Uh, so again, I look at the work side of things as it's not necessarily about what you're what you're paid. And then life again, that's that's you, that's your family, that's your friends. And and maybe in order to keep that aspect manageable, mm -hmm. it's just deciding, well, who is important to you to spend time with? Um, and not just saying yes to everything that comes our way, because that is such a classic trap that we gals get into. Right, right. It definitely can be. And for you, was was um, going on your own? Was it originally kind of a side hustle or, uh, or a passion project that led to to where you're at today? I'm curious because there's probably some people watching that are kind of thinking about, you know, making that move to being their own boss and and working on their own. So, what was your what was your path like going there? Um, thanks, Brenda. Gosh, that, I'd love to hear yours too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I. I started out in corporate America. Um, yeah. I didn't have an entrepreneurial family member. I didn't know what small business meant. Um, I really kind of went at it with just seeing a corporate structure wasn't going to allow me to have the 
the, you know, the flexible work opportunity that I wanted to be able to have and become a mother. So I really used going out on my own as my, my nesting, right? Like my, my activity mm -hmm. that I did in order to prepare to become a mom. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my motivation. I wanted a career that I could work flexibly and call my own shots, but I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. So that's really where I got into the social media marketing aspect of that happened to be the vehicle. So um, there's so many mm -hmm. writers out there and digital storytellers and project managers. I mean, there's so many cool disciplines that women can do on the side as, as a way to launch into working for themselves full time, or like I said, just keep it as a side hustle. Mm -hmm. So for you, it sounds like, I mean, you made a brave move and you left corporate and you're like, I'm going to set up shop and start my own business and, and give this a try. Um, thinking back, you know, any advice that you would offer to ladies that are watching the session here today that might be thinking of, of, of doing that, you know, any advice based on what your experiences were, you know, things that you might do differently or, or things that you learned that you'd like to kind of pay it forward and help others. Sure. I mean, I think there there are really three considerations that I kind of I, I kept in my mind then and have, have evolved them and still apply them today. And the first part is really what kind of work you take on. Mm -hmm. So if you are employed at a company and you're happy there, are you doing the types of projects and day to day work that fulfills you? Um, so I think that's important to think about. For me, in my case, it was what types of businesses do I want to work with? Um, what kind of marketing services did I want to specialize in? So that's where, again, social media was just the wild west um, nine, 10 years ago. Yeah. So so I think, you know, what kind of work do you take on? Um, the second thing, and this is, again, this is not, you don't have to be self-employed to make this part work, the how you get it done. Yeah. There are so many women that are perfectly happy working for a, for a corporation or a business that allows them to work on their terms. Um, so work flexibly, work in the evenings. Thankfully, COVID really was gasoline on that fire, right? Yeah. Allowing people to work from home. Mm -hmm. um, there's this whole new movement about be allowed to work from anywhere. It's not just about being in your actual home. Um, so again, I think it, this isn't saying you have to take the plunge into self-employment in order to benefit from work-life integration. Um, and then the third thing, as I've said before, it's, it's the who you surround yourself with. So maybe a good use of your time is to go to a networking event with other women that are doing the same kind of job you would like to do. So whether it's digital marketing or in getting involved in a writer's group, um, or if that's, you know, if you have a whole different set of people you want to spend your time with, that can help move you in that direction too. Great idea. And and you talk about networking groups. Um, my guess is you're probably still staying fairly active in, in networking groups um, online. Is that is that a correct? Yeah, I, I make the face because <laughs> during COVID, I, I had a whole blog post about, yeah. I, I had to, I had to release the expectation that I could do a lot of those networking groups. It was so exciting to see how many networking groups were coming online and there were webinars for days and there still are. Yeah. And that is the way of the future. So um, I just had to tell myself during during COVID, I wasn't able to, to jump into a lot of those online networking opportunities, but absolutely I value those, uh, whether it is in person or, or through a computer screen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you and too, right? I mean, you, you feel like networking groups are probably yeah. Right. Yeah, and I love it. And I, I've heard people talking about Zoom fatigue and, you know, other things that are kind of sprouting up as a result of, you know, what we're having to do virtually online networking and things like that. And um, for me, I mean, I still want to remain visible. And, and I'm sure for you as well, you find like sometimes the networking groups are a way of keeping your name and face kind of front and center um, and even just participating in conversations so people don't forget about you. And then once things come back, you know, what I find is that organizations that are still investing in themselves, their 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 employees, they're doing networking events, things like that. You know, we're not they're not going to be like, whatever happened to that Brenda Meller? Like, because they've been seeing me, you know, all along. I've been here. I've been here all along. You know, I didn't go anywhere. Um, but it can it's definitely be going back to this this discussion of work life balance. It can be a challenge because you and I, before this this COVID thing hit, we're working out of our home offices and. I've got two school age children, so they went to school during the day and my husband left the house to go to his his work during the day. And and I had at least from eight to three every day by okay. myself. Right. <laughs> so now we're we're home and you know, you've been as as sure as any other parent on the, the webinar here today has been a homeschooler for the past three months. So you just got doubled your job duties, right? <laughs> Um, not to mention, you've now added the role of psychologist and counselor, 
because the socialization and activities have all gone away combined with the spouse now working out of the home um, where, you know, now we're juggling living room, kitchen, and where are you working and you're being too loud on your conference call. You know, it's just a lot to go through and you need to keep your job running. Right. Yeah. So, so what, what have you learned over the past couple months? Um, and I want to say hacks, cause that counts kind of like mom hacks or life hacks or what have you learned as techniques that um, maybe you could share with others. And now we're into the next phase, which is summer vacation without camp. <laughs> and I dread right. this next phase. So yeah. what advice or what have you learned? Maybe you could share with me and then uh, with others that are watching here too. Sure. So, so don't mind me if I look like I have PTSD right now, because as you were bringing up all, <laughs> as you were bringing up all of the things that have happened through March, April, May. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we could have a whole other conversation about that. And yeah. I don't know if anyone ever had a playbook for that happening. However, I will say that one thing you said, you know, what's your hack? Yeah. I consider myself a type A'er. Um, I like to be focused and do things the best way I can. And I don't like to spread my focus and do things half, you know what? Yeah. So I think one of my best hacks, and I don't have it mastered, but I told myself every single day mm -hmm. is lower your expectation. Mm -hmm. I mean, lower to the point of being realistic. Mm -hmm. And I, I would plug things into my calendar every day to get done. Yeah. And then every day I would watch those days go by where I couldn't get to them. And I would feel further and further behind. And it was so self-defeating. Mm -hmm. So again, I know, I know COVID time is an outlier, yeah. but using that realistic expectation, if you just can get one or two things done that day in a normal time when you have childcare, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that, that's a reasonable expectation. Or if you know your kids need you the most from 10 till noon, then yeah. make sure you plug your task in for 8.30 p.m. When they're asleep, you might be tired, but at least you're setting yourself up for a better chance by setting a reasonable expectation. So I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I, I think it's it's hard to, and, and I think about the beginning of this, you know, back in March when the kids were first home and we're like, oh, it's gonna be three weeks, this'll be fine. <laughs> well, I'm like three weeks, how are we gonna do it? But who knew, you know, at the time we weren't even talking three weeks or three months, we don't even know how long. But um, I remember in the beginning, there was a there was a picture floating around on social media, which was like, here's your COVID schedule to use for kids. And do you, I don't know if you remember seeing it was like this rainbow coded, like nine to 10 a.m., wake up, eat breakfast. 10 to 11 was like story time. And then 11 to 12 was get outside for a bike ride. Or it, it, there was like hour by hour it had structured activities. And then there was like schoolwork time and reading time and not alert. And it was like the whole day from nine to four or five. And we printed it up and I was like, yeah, we're going to tackle this. You know, we're going to have this, this structured schedule. And and it lasted a day, I think. <laughs> and I think if I look at my refrigerator, I probably still have that calendar up there. But um, to your point, it's like we started with really high hopes on, on what to do. But then we kind of remembered, um, you know, my daughter doesn't um, have... Yeah, they gave her homework to do but when she would get that done for the day if the if the schedule said one to two homework she's like well i'm already done with my homework for the day so um we needed to shift but i do like your thought of of blocking time because i have had days where it's like i'm over scheduled and by the end of the day my my kids and my my spouse are kind of like you've been in your office all day you need, we need oh. more time of you but it is hard and i like your your thought of scheduling and and you do the, the mom hack too of after you get the kids to go to bed you work for probably a couple more hours until your head hits the pillow, right? And you're, you're yeah. cracked out for the night. <laughs> yeah. And that, again, when I, when I just think of living as a work-life integrator, yeah. um, it just, it just feels so fulfilling because it's not, oh, I have to get back on the computer. Yeah. It's well, I, you know, I, I get to, because I was able, what did I do earlier in the day? Oh, we went to the, you know, the park or what have you. Um, right. And that's why I get to do this work in the evening. So mm -hmm. Um, sure. Again, as I'm just thinking of all the, the it's, it's, it's hard to separate your mind into the, the COVID life and just normal life. Um, <laughs> but there, there really is this professional movement happening right now, as, as we said, that businesses that have never done a work from home before are now at least allowing people the opportunity to do so. Women, this is our chance to to benefit from that mm -hmm. and you know to prove that it can, of course, work for the company because if it works for you, you're going to be better and do better. Um, so I, I just look at, like I said, work-life integration as as a way to design design your day. And you know, you're you're designing your day and that becomes your life. And before you know it, you're you're just feeling more fulfilled. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great point. And kind of thinking of what you're looking to achieve on both sides, you know, both from the career perspective and from the family perspective and, and shifting around. And and I like your point that you made too about um 
you know, we, when we're self-employed, we can, we can call our shots in terms of our, our hours. And, and before this whole thing, it, Emily, I, I remember like going to Kroger at three o'clock in the afternoon was like the biggest thrill for me. I, oh, I'm really? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's silly, but I remember going in, you know, it, or Target, it's like, whatever. It's like in the middle of the day, you're going to the store and I didn't have, I mean, I worked in corporate for so many years and I love the experience that I have of being off on your own. You can go to Kroger or Target or whatever in the afternoon and and you don't have a boss saying, when are you coming back to work? And you don't have meetings that are calling you back. I mean, the trade off of that is you have, you know, sometimes work you're doing every single day and every single night and even on the weekends. But it's so fulfilling in terms of what I get back out of working for myself. Would you agree for yourself? I completely agree. I, I, I love that. That's such an intentional example, right? Of mm-hmm. you got your work done and you knew maybe later in the evening you were going to get back online so that you could go do your grocery shopping at three. Um, again, since we are on the self-employment side, I do I do want to point out that there are companies that will allow women, not just women, any employee to do that. Um, but it's it's finding those and you know using now as a chance to to try different um, structures to your day. So that way you don't just have to be self-employed in order to go to Kroger at three o'clock. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, but side hustles, they're huge, hugely popular with women. Um, mm-hmm. and again, a side hustle, I, I was reading data that showed that the number one reason women in particular have a side hustle, they cite it as a, as an opportunity to spend more time with their children. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's just about, you know, making those life choices and, and deciding, you know, what it is that you factor into the life side that you're balancing and, um, integrating. Yeah. And then, and what you, what you gain out of that too. I, I love that aspect of it too. Very good. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at the time here. What I'd like to do, Emily, is shift into um, audience comments and questions in here. And I've been throwing your, your hello comments and stuff online as we've been going here. Um, oh, thank you. With heels. Do you know Mavita Burris? I feel like you guys should know. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. So, so as she goes on, on Facebook, her name is Faith with Heels. Yes. Um, and I definitely have the Zooms. <laughs> is that a disease, Mavita? I can definitely see that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the Zooms, right? The Zoom fatigue. I love that. I'm going to use that expression now. Um, Olivia is sharing, um, you know, besides time management, it's also energy management, um, you know, being intentional, devoting time to tasks. So what are your thoughts there on energy management, Emily? Is that prompting you to think of of, of any strategies you want to share with us? Yes. I, um, one of my mentors, Amy Jo Martin, she always says that you, you, can multitask, but you <laughs> cannot multifocus. Yeah. So I think, um, again, don't make the mistake of just throwing all your work responsibilities and life choices in, in the pot and mixing it up because then your head just spins and you're trying to multifocus and that is just not possible because that mm-hmm. leads to that fatigue. That is going to take that energy, you know, what would that be, a barometer, uh, yeah. odometer? Um, yeah. take it full and, and ready to tackle the day down to zero, like never before. So I really agree with Olivia that managing your time can lead to managing your energy. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you, uh, uh, Olivia, for, for adding into the conversation there. And um, Jennifer agrees with the grocery shopping when everyone else. Isn't it funny? I ha- I remember one day when I was early on in the um, self-employment process and I was like, literally, I was at Target. I think I just got back in my car and it was one of those Target's um, Emily, they have like the Starbucks inside and I got myself, oh, it was like, oh, <laughs> like, I, and I, I haven't had, you know, I have, I've had one Starbucks um, since this whole thing happened with COVID. I haven't been out to a Starbucks, but I remember sitting in the parking lot with my ice latte. It was like in May, it was like a warm day. And I took a picture and I posted it on social media. And I'm like, that's what this is all about for me. I mean, being um, freed up in the middle of the day and I'm rewarding myself because I've earned it. I've completed my client work for the, the week. I've, I'm at a good revenue uptick and you know, I'm happy with where I'm at. It's a reward and um, giving yourself rewards. And, and, you know, there's this whole concept to Emily of, of humble bragging and, and how much do you share? Um, and I'm curious what your thoughts are too. How much do you share about yourself and your journey? And at what point I don't ever feel like I've crossed the line because I'm I'm like I don't call it humble bragging. I'm like I'm just sharing what's going on, and I I, I feel like it's created a little bit of my brand. But what are your thoughts there? And how much do you share? And yeah. and does it cross the line into humble bragging? What are the concerns there? Um, great point. By the way, the tar- the target visual was so good. Like you're. <laughs> Were you, were you tasting the ice latte as I was describing it? <laughs> yes. I mean, that is that is work life integration textbook. Right. Yeah. Um, my colleague, Deanna, just just posted a picture of her 
She was working on her laptop in her Jeep using the laundromat's Wi-Fi because she had to <laughs> wash something huge. And she said, work-life integration. I can get my work done while I'm also doing something else. Um, yeah. But, but the, I mean, the humble bragging, again, that kind of falls into to COVID. It's a whole other topic on its own. But I think the, yeah. the short story is you are, you are telling something from an authentic perspective. Right. Um, you, know, you, are, you are able to confidently share what you've done and what's worked for you. So there's not a part of me that considers that bragging. Yeah. Um, and really, like I said, that's, that's been the, the, the fuel to our own next chapter of, well, you always start to take for granted what you know, and you always start to take for granted what you do. But we really stopped and looked and just said, well, wait a minute, we can help other women do what we do because we've done it. Right. So um, some might say like, oh, well, that's that's kind of bragging. You know, you're saying you have the gold standard. You have the, the all the answers. It's not that it's we don't have a perfect solution, but we at least have the experience and we're willing to, to help other gals benefit from it. And I even come back to you, I'm going to bring the, the title back on screen here. You know, when, when we hear the word boss lady yeah. um, and I think of, was it Tina Fey that had the the book and it was something about I'm not bossy or was it Beyonce? Who was it? Somebody had this expression. I'm not bossy. I'm the boss. I don't remember. Well, I love both of those ladies. I so don't know. I... <laughs> There's a flavor of it out there, but you know, and it, and it even starts when, when children are younger and when we see boys taking control of a situation and we're like, wow, he's a leader. And then when you see a girl taking a situation, control of a situation, and, and you know, sometimes you say, well, don't be so bossy with your friends, you know, let them choose too. And, and when we use terms like boss, it, it's sometimes can be negative for females and, and positive for males. So um, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of complexities you know, around it. When I say boss lady, there's girl boss, there's mom boss to right. me, just like a boss. It's just <laughs> owning it. It's just being confident and independent and making your own choices. Yeah. Um, you know, not relying on on playing defense, um, being proactive with your choices. So to me, when I talk about being a boss lady, it's simply mm -hmm. taking control of your life. And that might be in small chunks, but mm -hmm. it's it's owning, you know, what you want out of it. So, but it does come with pink cowboy hats. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you should have like you have like a boss lady hat. Like I feel like <laughs> And maybe it's a metaphorical, but I feel like you yeah. do have one, you know, it's, wow. it's, it's something, you know, and when I saw the topic, I was like, oh, she's definitely going to have like a hat or something. But wow. um, what, what I like to say is your own. And I feel like sometimes in society, we we think about I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to go to, to college. I'm supposed to work for a corporation. I'm supposed to rise up the company ladder, you know, and, and there's things you're supposed to do. And then at, at some point, you might reach a point where you're like, I don't even think I'm happy. With, with what I'm doing. I'm doing what I suppose what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not happy. Yes. Um, and then and then once you own what makes you happy and, and and you know for you and I it was stepping out of corporate and and embracing this this you know entrepreneurship path. Um I mean I think that really resonates with me. I mean what you're talking about here today. I'm happy to hear that. The um that I mean th those are literal keys out of the the framework that I talked about. You know what what work do you take on? And that might mean what work under a corporation do you take on as, you know, whatever position or title you have there, but also just your side hustle. You know, what do you choose to do on the side that fulfills you? So um, there's, and even 10 years ago when I went out on my own, I was, I never led with, we work from home. Sure, mm -hmm. we talked about it when people would, a client or someone would ask, oh, where's your office? Mm -hmm. um, ironic, I'm always going to meet with them. But working out of your home was still newish, but it's 2020 people like this is exciting times that you don't have to feel like that's subpar anymore. Um, it's, it's the norm. And again, there's companies that, that will give you that chance to work from home, but also, um, I mean, there's, we could have a whole conversation just about bona fide flexible work opportunities for women, whether you're working for a company that has, you know, a representative sort of opportunity, um, there's a lot out there. There's a lot out there. And there's also organizations and the mom project. I mean, um, the second shift, there's all sorts of platforms that will help women find flexible work opportunities. And like I said, that's, we just happen to be using social media as a way to give women those opportunities. I love it. And I, I remember hearing something a while back and it was, um, it was kind of like, I don't, I don't know what the term is. It's work share or something, but, but oh. they would take a 40 hour position and split it into two 20 hour jobs. And um, they might use two, two moms, um, and, and I'm thinking of the scenario, two moms in the, in the position to fill the, the role, and they, they might overlap for an hour or two every week, but you know, one is serving for half of the week and the other serving for the other half of the week, and they're both 
contributing to the position, but there's some work sharing element. And I don't know if I'm using the right word. Have you heard of that? Those type yes. of um, job yeah. sharing. I've, I've heard that too. In fact, um, the one example I have is I, I know a gal who worked um, at a school district doing that, which you would think might not be the most flexible work atmosphere. It's, you know, it's a school district. So she would job share and her side hustle, her passion project was she was teaching fitness classes. That was really her passion. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's all kinds of, you know, outside the box opportunities that are now a little more mainstream. So yeah. I encourage women again, to not to just not feel stuck in what they're currently doing and to just think of, think of something that they want to incorporate into their life that even gives them professional fulfillment, whether or not it's paid, whether or not it's, you know, on a, on a yeah. runway to become an entrepreneur or just to, to stay employed in corporate America. Yeah. So we have a question. Speaking of corporate America, we have a question from Cheryl. Um, the pandemic has affected so much in terms of flexibility and, you know, parents are having, now having to be home with their children. And I've heard several stories where, you know, you, you both have a work call at the same time as the child has a Zoom or, or a go-to meeting for their class. And they've had to kind of make arrangements to work around because we're all in the same boat together on this. But we've had to, um, corporations have had to uh, utilize flexibility. So what are your thoughts? Do you think the flexibility will continue or do you think we're going to go back to their, their old ways once we're back in the, the world of normalcy again? Hi, Cheryl. That's a good question. Uh, I think a lot of it is dictated by the leadership. Mm -hmm. What are the needs of the leaders of that company? Um, it's not it's not even a gender thing. It's just it, does the leadership team have um, a young, forward thinking, uh, modern you know mindset mm -hmm. um, that sees outside of structure as being the answer to a more successful workplace? So um, I, I think there'll be a direct correlation personally between the companies that immediately return to as it was before um, with the values of their leadership. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And, and I think it's wherever where they were from before. Um, I think this this whole pandemic is really creating it's it's creating leaders and it's also revealing the leadership qualities, I think, in some ways, too. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Talk to me more about that. I mean, so, so what I mean, I feel like there are some leaders who were who were operating business as usual and, and they could function really well with that. But now they're de they're they're dealing with and they're having to um work within situations where they're having to give employees flexibility and they're having to trust that people are working from home because they have no other choice to do so and i've seen some situations where the managers are becoming micromanagers you need to check in at 9 a.m with an email to me and i've even heard some people saying well you have to have your slack open all day long or the boss doesn't think that we're working so they're getting really into micromanaging because they're not trusting their employees whereas other people are kind of taking a step back um, and trusting their employees and they're doing check-ins. They're, they're reaching out to every employee and their team once a week and saying, Emily, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do to support you? As opposed to saying, Emily, I didn't see you on Slack Monday at nine. Are you, are you not doing your job? You know what I mean? Like, I feel yeah. like there's, there's some qualities that are being pulled, um, pulled out of leaders or that are being revealed as we're going through this. So I think those examples are very clear of the difference between working from home and flexible work. I mean, you could argue that some of those people's jobs can be done flexibly, but mm -hmm. they were literally, they had a framework and they were shoved into a work from home atmosphere and it, it's not working. It, it, and it can, it can, um, but it needs some some further exploration um, around some systems and whatnot. But I, I see the, well, the check-ins and the must be on Slack or else it looks like you're not doing anything as that's that's just simply not flexible work, but it could be. Right, right, yeah. And um, we, we've had a couple other comments coming in. I'm shifting gears a little bit here. So Mildred's retired. Um, but she's saying you're, you're inspiring her for innovative topics for a similar platform. So very good. Well, glad to see you, Mildred, on here. Awesome. Yeah, all kinds of, all kinds of good times right now to just think of new ideas. Just let yes. those seeds kind of marinate. <laughs> Absolutely. And Cheryl is, uh, we're, we're doing, we, when we get large comments, we have to do the Wilson. This is the home improvement where we have to look oh, over. Oh, funny. Over the fence. <laughs> you remember the fence on home totally. improvement? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, so given my sound of not looking at my phones while listening to someone else, it's hard. Uh, but we, we do do that, right? We're always multi, we're like, okay, well, I can check this email. And I remember, um, you know, being in the corporate environment, and there were certain people where every time I would meet with them, and I had a scheduled meeting time, this was my meeting time, my 30 minute meeting time, and I would come in, and the person would be half having a conversation and half like doing the I'm like, how can you focus on me? And I would even sometimes say, um, you know, Emily, it looks like you're, you're really distracted. Would you prefer to reschedule the meeting? Oh, wow. Okay. And, and, and person would say, no, I'm fine. 
Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> right. it's one thing that that's, that's an interesting way to handle it with the other person. I, I would love to know from Cheryl, how does she feel from mm -hmm. those days where she is on, on the computer, on a call, checking her phone? I mean, I, I absolutely have had those days. In fact, I've had those, those years. Yeah. Um, but then you just, at the end of the day, just feel drained and you don't feel fulfilled. You don't feel like you got any one thing done well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where, again, it, that, that kind of, to me, falls a little bit into the work-life balance trap. Like, which one are you doing better right now? I know that was all within a work context, but um, yeah. So really the multi-focusing is an energy suck. Yeah. No, really good point. And I like it. And think about how you're feeling at the end of those days. So I'm going to challenge myself to be thinking about that because I I have, I'm guilty of that sometimes too, like looking at my phone when I should be doing, you know, I'm sitting outside with my daughter and she's like, you're not watching me. I'm like, oh, you're riding your bike. <laughs> I know. It's I hard. Am. <laughs> Especially the last couple of months, they've needed us in ways that even we won't ever understand. But no, yeah, it's different and it's challenging. And, you know, we have meltdowns every couple of days of, you know, I, when do I get to play with my friends again? And we're trying to do the social distancing play dates, but it's hard. It's, um, yeah. It, it, it's hard to balance it and it's like we I'm, we're all in the middle of it so we can't even like see it we're going to look back someday and there's going to be an emotional and mental impact on all we were living through a very traumatic time right now and um we probably know it to some extent but then i think we also probably don't want to admit how traumatic this is being separated from society and from our families and things like that but um you know we're there there's ebbs and flows right and you gotta have kind of I, I don't know about you brenda i found that I had to put my professional fulfillment on the back burner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, whether it was tuning into the endless webinars that looked so good, right. um, I, I just couldn't. So I had to back burner that fulfillment, but that's not a long-term strategy because as soon as you start to deny a part of yourself, things get all out of whack. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so again, COVID is, a, is the outlier here, um, but going forward, it, like I said, it's a better way to attain having it all. If you really define, well, what does that even mean to you? Yeah. So uh, let's see. Uh, Akshay had a question about, you know, managing household, you know, during the pandemic, you need to be active with your work. What energy booster would you suggest? And we, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Emily, do you want to add anything to that? Well, I mean, having the right expectation is kind of my energy booster. If I, if I have too high of an expectation, I have too many things on my list to do immediately. I feel depleted and mm -hmm. I feel like I've failed before I've even started. Yeah. So um, I would say in order to keep my energy strong, um, make sure to set that expectation realistically. Yeah. Very good. And I like thinking about, you know, even the goals, what are you looking to achieve that day? Or even like reflecting back on your day, what did you, what did you achieve? But then also what did you not get to? And, you know, Shifting those priorities a little bit. So they, I love this quote too. You can multitask but not multifocus. I love that. I think that's going to make my Pinterest or not my Pinterest, my Instagram inspiration wall. And I'll attribute that to you on there for sure. And then Olivia yeah. said, bossy pants. Thank you, Olivia. I, I think <laughs> the book. You remember the no, book it it's like Tina Fey and she's got like a man's hands who are like, you know, it's, it's like a, a different version of it on the cover or something like that. But gotcha. gosh, I love her so much. She had that really great was it? I don't know. She she did an SNL from home when they did the SNL from home, and she was talking about what her days were like. Anyway, I, I love Tina Fey, but I got it. it. Thanks, Olivia. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, we're reaching the top of the hour here. So, what I'd like to do is we're going to start to to wrap up the conversation here today, and I'm going to pull your. I'm going to try to navigate to it. I'm going to pull up your LinkedIn URL up on screen here, Emily, and I'm going to navigate to your LinkedIn in the background here. But um, as I'm doing that, any kind of final comments for the group? Um, takeaways, you know, anything we haven't talked about yet that you'd like to, to leave with our, our listeners here today? Uh, thanks, Brenda. No, I, I think at the end of the day, just knowing that we're in this new era of work from home and, and work-life integration is all part of the daily lexicon. You know, you no longer have to feel like I'm going to have a huge uphill battle to convince my boss that I can work from home um, or that, you know, there's no way I can possibly start a side business. I mean, side hustle, it's a common term today. So like I said, I just get very excited because that's, it's all common today. People had a front row seat of what it looked like um, during COVID. Um, but really, again, I know I'm speaking to those ladies, the boss ladies out there. This, this really is a chance for you to say, okay, I'm tired of being overwhelmed and unfulfilled. And mm -hmm. so let me look for something that allows me to work on my own terms and really use the gifts that you want to, whether that's, like I said, if you are an artisan, uh, an artist, or if you are someone who's more, you know, project management, marketing, um, mm -hmm. it's a really cool time. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I've got your LinkedIn up on screen right now, Emily. And are you open to um, invitations from people who are watching the broadcast here today? Yes, sure. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, I always like to to connect with new people and you know, like any smart LinkedIn person, you got to make sure it's a it's a genuine fit. So sure. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what I would recommend that you guys do if you're watching the video and if you wanted to connect with Emily, visit her LinkedIn profile. When you send her an invitation to connect, mention that you watched the video here today. If there was something particularly compelling about the video that resonated with you, mention that in the invitation. If you're considering, if you already are a boss lady and you're looking for additional tips on the resources that she shared, um, definitely, you know, uh, check out her LinkedIn profile, but also I want to pull up your website again, emilyahay.com. And I, I'm sure you probably have some resources, maybe some blogs or videos on the website too, that we could check out. Thanks. Yes. You can definitely link to our company site from my personal site. And there's, there's a myriad of, of information over there. Awesome. All right, Emily. Well, it's been such a pleasure. I miss seeing you in person. Aww. I know we're going to see each other at some point in the future. But um, in the meantime, I just want to say thank you. It was really a delight chatting with you today. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Honestly, I think I said this in one of my posts that it, this this hour was self care. You were so kind to invite me on and to get to talk about a topic that fires me up. And again, I with full respect consider you a work life integrator and a boss lady at that. Oh, <laughs> you are too sweet. So I want to do like I haven't done a virtual high five in a while. So I want to do a virtual high okay. five. Okay. There we go. Oh, oh. you got to go, go like in the middle of the screen. So it's reverse. So it's Ready? a little reverse one so two just, three just hold your hand there because what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the still there you go on youtube so like try to get it as close to the line as you can and then look at the camera and smile there we go so this will be the still <laughs> that we have on youtube so i like pull Sorry, everyone and that'll be like you were like how did we do that high five it's actually a very coordinated effort you guys when we do these things so. yes i felt like ricky bobby like where do i put right. my hand <laughs> I'll, I'll like reverse like you're looking in the opposite direction yeah. as, we're, as we're on camera here so it, it, anything's better than the delay we had in the beginning so glad yeah. we fixed the technical side it's all good i'm glad we got that figured out all right guys thank you for watching i did put a little um ticker that's running below it says please share this video so um if you're watching this in playback we would encourage you to share it with your network um, if you're watching this live after you get off here, you know, click to share the video with others, um, share this with a boss lady in your network, share this with somebody who might be thinking about, um, going that route of entrepreneurship, or maybe, you know, somebody who might be benefiting from any of these great tips that Emily offered here today on, on work-life balance and integration and, and all of these great subjects, um, kind of along the line, the side hustles and all, so many great things that we talked about here today. So I'd encourage you. And then also check out mellermarketing.com slash subscribe, where if you join my VIP email list, I'll give you a notification of future social media interviews that are coming up as well as some LinkedIn strategy tips. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you online again later in the week. And Emily, I will see you at some point in the future. We'll have to get together for a Starbucks. I love that. Some pie. <laughs> Always make me want the social media pie. So Brenda, thank you. And thanks everyone for tuning in. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.